Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone to round two of some unique collections from around the hobby. Uh, thank you again everyone for submitting a lot of great ones I didn't even get a chance to use, but I'm uh, going to take a look at five more uh, incredible collections or really cool collections here in this video. First collection here is from Bill Engel and I'm just going to read his uh, story that he wrote to me in the email. I purchased my first packs of cards in 1969 and those first cards was a 1969 Reggie Jackson rookie. It's pictured here uh, in the PSA 1 holder. As a five-year-old, I wasn't aware of the condition-sensitive nature of card collecting. However, I became a, a baseball fan and a card collector. I fell in and out of the collecting world, but always followed the game. I seem to always follow Reggie Jackson through the years. I remember his 1971 All-Star game, Out of the Park Home Run in Detroit, his many World Series games with the A's and Yankees, especially the 1978 series. In 1990, a new card company announced a new concept, Find the Reggie promo. Upper Deck included uh, actual Reggie Jackson autographs on 2,500 specially inserted cards. I was hooked once again. I purchased multiple boxes of 36 packs back in the day, but with no luck. I remember the first Reggie auto I saw was at a card dealer encased in a lucite brick of a holder uh, with a bold $1,250 uh, asking price. Do you know how many Toyota Camrys you could buy in 1990 for $1,250? Well, I could not come close to affording it. I fell out of card collecting. Uh, I fell out of the card collecting world once again. Then, in 1996, I discovered eBay. One of the first things I searched was for the 1990 Reggie Auto card. I purchased my first one on uh, eBay for $50 plus shipping. I was hooked once again. I went compulsive on eBay. I purchased a lot of varied cards, but always gravitated towards the Reggies. This uh, continued for about 12 years, and today I have 43 of the 2,500 uh, Reggie Jackson Autos. Of a particular interest is I have number one, which I sent to PSA for grading, received an authentic auto and an eight grade. I've included a picture of another card, number one, also graded by PSA uh, 9 with Mr. October inscription. Rumor has it that Reggie Jackson owns that card himself. Also, I purchased separately and years apart two cards numbered uh, to uh, 1399 and sent both to PSA for grading. Both came back as sevens with consecutive PSA certification numbers. I also branched off into some of the other following Upper Deck $2,500 auto cards, but the Reggie is my favorite. I've trended away from this series because I've reached my limit and the prices are much more than I want to pay nowadays. I hope you and others find this interesting and happy collecting. Next collection is from Mark Richards, and I'm just going to again read uh, his email that he sent to me. My unique collection started from realizing something about my dreams. Since childhood, I've always had dreams about discovering hidden gems in dime boxes at my local card shows and resale shops. I always wake up and feel excited that I had a cool dream about cards, but disappointed that I didn't actually find them. And then I started to think about the card dreams and realized that the card I was dreaming about was entirely made up distorted combinations of cards and design elements that come from looking through and internalizing bits and, uh, and pieces of this card and that card. The pandemic hit and I was going through my PC and I stumbled upon an art card I made of a 1986 Topps Ozzy Smith. It was the artwork of a seven-year-old that loved baseball cards so much that he decided to make his own. I felt inspired by that little kid and decided to make a custom Bo Jackson. Then I was off to the races. To date, I am up to 280 custom cards that consist of cut autos, patches, gloves, hats, bats, socks, laundry tags, etc. I use only baseball cards to, uh, to construct the customs, with a few exceptions, and in a very real way, it has invigorated my collecting and given me a hobby that I love almost obsessively. My journey through card collecting has had many faces, trading and ripping as a kid, selling and purchasing as an adult. This project has made me realize what I love about cards, the dreaming about baseball history, the stories and the aesthetics and the uh, art of the cards themselves. Next collection is from Scott Layden, and again, we'll just read his email. I have been a trading card collector since I was about five years old. My six-year-old brother and I would get a little change from my mom and buy a couple of packs of Topps early 1970s baseball, football, or basketball cards. I still remember vividly anticipating what the new packs and cards would look like and when they finally showed up at our local drugstore. Even as a little boy, I recall liking the packs almost as much as, I, as the cards that were inside. My brother and I continued to collect cards together until about high school when other things became more fun and important. My card collecting kind of went on hiatus for a few years until the mid-80s when, uh, when I was a sailor stationed in San Diego in the Navy and I just happened to walk into a hobby store and spotted all the boxes on the walls with a wide variety of sports and non-sports trading card packs and almost immediately I was hooked again. I started occasionally by, uh, by just buying a few trading card packs and kept them unopened. A little did I know that now, almost 40 years later, I have continued buying a few packs here and there and have amassed an unopened pack collection of every trading card pack you can possibly imagine to date with approximately 11,000 individual different packs. I'll share a, a quick story regarding my collection. Uh, I initially just collected one of every sport and non-sport pack that I can find. One day, though, in 1992, 
I walked into my local card shop and noticed something a little different. I asked the store owner and she said, oh, there, this is a new trading card game. I stood there for a moment thinking about, should, you know, should I buy this pack or not? Well, of course I did, and that pack was an original booster of Magic the Gathering Alpha. I still have it in about 2,000 various uh, TCG booster packs. Over the years, many friends and family have checked out my pack collection, and by far the most common response is, how can you keep from not opening them? And, and, and what if you have some unbelievably valuable card inside? I guess I'm either pretty dumb, pretty smart, or uh, just not that curious of a guy. Next up is a collection from Bradley Griffith, and I, and I like this one. This is a type of collection I would have put together back when I was a, a, a pure collector. Here is a binder I've been working on putting together for the last six months or so. The goal is to have one card of every player in the Baseball Hall of Fame. The cards are sorted in order of induction year, so as you can see, the first page includes guys like Honus Wagner, Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, and the last page as of now includes guys like David Ortiz, Minnie Minoso, and Larry Walker. I began by filling my binder with one index card for each player, listing their name and the year they were inducted. Uh, I then went through my collection and started replacing index cards with cards of guys I already had. After that, I would go to my local card uh, store every Friday after work and spend about an hour sifting through old boxes to find the players I needed. I would get about 15 cards or so per trip, and the owner would usually charge me 25 to 50 cents per card. Since I'm storing this in a binder, I do not use valuable cards, so the cards obviously don't actually have to be from their playing days. When looking for cards to use, I'm looking for the following things. One, the picture on the card has a classic look that depicts the player in a way that I think well represents them. Two, the player is with the team who they were inducted with. And three, the back of the card has most or all of their career stats. Of course, this isn't always doable with all players. In fact, while I have most players in my binder filled by now, a few are really hard to find any cards of at all. They, uh, these are primarily Negro League players or 1800s guys. I can't even find a single card anywhere right now of Frank Grant or Ray Brown. Anyway, my hope is that one day when my one-year-old son is old enough to get into baseball, we can look through this together and he can start to learn about some of the history and maybe even enjoy it as much as I do. All right, and the last collection here is from Ben B. I'm going to read from, uh, partly from his email and partly from his, uh, from, uh, his YouTube video. The Beckett message board is where I acquired a lot of my collecting knowledge. As I learned more about the hobby, I learned that people had a focus. Uh, a team collector, a player collector, a type collector, and I didn't really have a focus at all at first. So being a Jew, and when I played baseball, I played first base, I thought it was important to have a Hank Greenberg card, and I did a book report on, on him in the seventh grade. By the third card I owned of his, I knew this was going to be my thing. In 2018, I sold off a third of my modern Hank Greenberg cards that I didn't feel as strong a connection to and reinvested it into the cards I truly love, which are cards from his playing days. Since then, I have focused on buying multiples of high-quality vintage cards of his because it is what I enjoy the most. Comparing them against each other and studying the nuances of color, centering, and registration is a fun case study. For those of you who don't really know about Hank Greenberg, he played in the 30s and 40s for the Detroit Tigers and faced a lot of adversity. Detroit was traditionally a very anti-Semitic part of the country. He faced a lot of that firsthand, even in front of his home fans and ballpark. Aside from being a fantastic slugger, he also served two tours of duty in World War II and missed four years of the prime of his career to serve his country. He never really thought of himself as a hero or a role model to people, especially to Jews, but he really just wanted to go out there and play baseball, uh, the game that he loved. The more I read up on him, the more I knew this was what I wanted to focus my collection on. So that's it. Thank you, everyone, for watching and hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, thank you, everyone, for submitting all your great uh, collections. It was really, really cool to go through. I may do a round three. Haven't quite decided yet, uh, but we'll you know, decide that within a, within a couple weeks. But until then, have a great day. Stay safe. See you all again real soon. Thanks, everyone.